Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to talk about a security flaw that exists in Microsoft Access. Whether you are connecting to an Access backend or even a database server like SQL Server, if you're using linked tables, then you want to know about this security flaw. Today's question comes from Sam in Marietta, California, one of my gold members. Sam says, I have noticed that even with a password protected backend MS Access database file, it's still possible for someone to import my data into a blank new database by connecting to the front end file. How can I prevent this? Well, yes, Sam, this is a security concern that's been around in Access since I can remember. Um, if you have a password protected backend and you link to it from your front end, that password is stored in that linked table connection. And all someone really has to do is import the tables from your front end and they can get your data. I know it's crazy. And I wish Microsoft would do something to prevent this, but they can't. I'm going to show you exactly how it works in just a second. Now, as I've shown in several of my other videos, if you want to share your database on your network, or even if you're sharing it online with SQL Server, you have to split your database, right? Your front end is where all your forms and reports and stuff are, and your back end is where you can put your tables and queries and the data. Now, in this back end database, you can set up a database password. And this is a single password that you can use so that to make a connection to this database, to open the database, basically, you have to have the password. Now it's a one size fits all. So it's one password for everybody to get into that database. Now an easy fix for the problem that Sam brought up is to simply put a password on your front end as well. Again, it's just one password and everybody who gets in the database has that one password, but it will prevent a completely unauthorized user, someone who shouldn't be in the database at all, from opening your front end as well. Now you can set up different databases in different folders and using Windows security on your network, you can prevent different users from getting into different parts of your database by just simply making different database files, right? You've got you know, your, your customer information, you've got maybe some secure information, credit card numbers, that kind of stuff, accounting information. You might have a separate folder with a separate database set up for those users. And so using Windows security, you can keep those people out of those databases. And of course, there are some simple security things you can do, like making an ACCDE file and locking down your database front end so that people can't get in there and see sensitive information in your code or in your form design, right? Making an ACCDE file is also important if you're distributing the front end to different users. You don't want them getting into your code. I got lots of different free videos. I just showed you a bunch of them. I'll put some more links to some down below that cover different ways you can secure your access database. Now for demonstration today, let me show you what the security flaw entails. I've got a back end database that has my data, my tables and my queries in it. And I've got a front end database that has my forms and reports and all that stuff in it. Now in my back end database, I have a password. So if I try to open this or if anyone tries to open it, they get at, you know, ask for the password. So the password is 599 CD. I'll enter that. And now you can see that I'm in here and I've got access to the tables and queries in this back end. Okay. And those are linked to my front end. So if I open up this front end, you can see there I have access to the data because when I created these links, I specified the password. Okay. So that password is stored in the connection between this database and the back end. Now, obviously you could put a password on your front end and that will prevent people from getting into here. But let me show you what happens. If someone takes another blank database here, I'll just copy my tech help free template into here and I'll try to use this guy to connect to that back end. All right, open it up. I'm going to delete the tables and the queries from this database. All right, let's try to connect to that back end. All right, new data source from database access. Let's uh, let's link to the tables, right? Browse. Browse to the folder, pick the back end, hit open and go. And it's asking for the password. Okay, so I can't link to it. Let's try importing those tables. All right, external data, 
new data source from database access browse let's try to import import the table said okay and it wants the password again okay all right so i can't do that let's try let's try linking to the tables in the front end all right so new database front access blah 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 let's link to browse let's try pulling them in from the front end okay all right there's nothing there okay all right now here's where the security flaw is external data new data source from database access we're going to import tables from the front end file ready there they are watch this select all those guys select all the queries hit OK takes a second okay now I got the data there it is without even specifying the password why because the password saved in the front end Microsoft fix this loophole don't let people do this Sammy add this to the list this is a pain all right so how do you get around this well the easy way obviously is put a password on your front end okay because if I get rid of this stuff here okay well, basically what's happening here is it's importing the connection right since this connection exists in the front and it pulls in the connection even without the password it pulls the password in too all Microsoft all you guys got to do is just say that hey if this is a password protected table don't import it don't import that linked table that that'll fix the security problem uh, you could put a password on the front end itself okay but again then everyone's gonna have to have that password to open the database all right password on your front end that's one solution another one create separate databases for sensitive data like I said before and use Windows network folders with different passwords okay another way is to use VBA to link to the tables as needed so in other words when you open up the customer form create that link link to the customer table supply the password and then when the customer form is closed you can close that table you're still technically vulnerable because while you've got the table open someone else might pull this trick so you know when the database is not in use or if it's after hours and everyone's logged off your database is fine but if it's in the middle of the day and someone else sees the database oh someone's got it open they can they can technically pull that table in I cover how to link two tables dynamically with VBA code in the extended cut for my relink tables video. Now the other option and the one that I like to use, it takes a little more work to set it up, but I'm going to show you how to do it. That's basically using unbound forms throughout your database. And what we'll do is when we open a form, we'll create a record set that will connect to the data source on the fly pull in the data that you need for that form and then when you close the form it just closes the record set you don't need any linked tables at all you can link to tables you can link to queries they can be in secured access backend files they can be on the web they can be an SQL server they can be in a local SQL server file you can connect to any ODB source that you want and that's what I'm gonna show you how to do well I'm not gonna say today because we're gonna cover it in part two in tomorrow's video but I'm gonna show you how to do this okay now, if you are using SQL Server or any ODBC data source, uh, uh, MySQL or any of those guys, I, I, ha I haven't done this myself, but you, you should be able to do it with them. Uh, you can use Windows authentication with SQL Server. That means that if it's a local server on premises, you can set up Windows authentication so the database server knows who the Windows user is and you can give them permissions that way. I'm going to cover that in my upcoming SQL Server uh, uh, course series that I'm planning. Um, it's not super hard to set up. You just have to do it right. Another thing you can do is use pass-through queries. All right, a pass-through query essentially sends the connection information to the server. The server runs the query and just sends you back the data that you requested. You can specify the password to the database in the pass-through query. Okay, and I do cover pass-through queries in my existing SQL Server online seminar. Um, and the next two options are the ones that I also mentioned before for the access backend. You can link to the tables as needed. In other words, when you open a form, you can link to its table and treat it like a linked table. Again, potentially vulnerable while it's in use. Or you can use the same unbound form trick that I'm going to show you when we connect to a table or query using VBA code. 
I will show you an example of how to do this in tomorrow's video, but before tomorrow, it's going to be a pretty advanced VBA lesson. Um, so if you don't know VBA and you wanna learn, start here with this and then go through the lessons here. These are free, they're on my YouTube channel, they're on my website, watch this. And also be sure to understand my record sets video. Watch this as well so you know what record sets are and how they work. Consider this homework before tomorrow's video. Go watch this, brush up on this stuff now. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. Or if you're a member, you can watch it right now because I'm gonna record it in just a few minutes. But that is gonna be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. And now that we've identified the problem, tomorrow we're gonna to see how to fix it. So I'll see you tomorrow for part two. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsor, Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. They're manufacturing experts specializing in Microsoft Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. Check them out at accessexperts.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, 
John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.